Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. We'll check this out. This is the Turbo Ant X7 Pro. It is one of the most popular electric scooters money can buy and they sell a ton of these and I believe right now it's on sale so you might want to check this out. So Turbo Ant sent me one of these because they see me flying my little drones around the air. They said, hey, would you drive one of our scooters and maybe chase it with a drone? And I said, sure, why not? I love to fly drones and electric scooters sound pretty cool. Now I'm a skateboard guy. Now if you watch my channel, I've been a skateboard guy all my life. I drive electric skateboards everywhere, especially with drones, when I'm doing product reviews and whatnot. However, you know, a scooter, electric scooter sounds pretty cool. I used to always think scooters were something for kids because that's how I grew up. I had a little scooter when I was young, you know, you push with one leg. But if you live in a city, in my city of Ottawa, Canada, we have electric scooters everywhere because you rent them to commute around the city, especially in tourist season. However, if you own your own scooter, well, then you will save a ton of money and you use this as a commuter. Now, let's say you work downtown and parking is super expensive. So all you need is one of these because you could either drive it from your home to downtown or you do like most people do in my city what you do is you have your scooter you fold it up let me show you this baby folds up there's a little latch down here that I pull down like this and I pull the handles down like this and they lock into the back and then you take this and you put it in the trunk of your car it weighs 33 pounds and then when you get to your destination pull it out of your trunk and then push down here lift this up pull this little latch up, flick this little holding device around, and you're all set to go. It's that simple. And then of course, you would drive this to your place of work, fold it up when you get to your place of work, and then again, drive it back to your car and drive home. This thing has a 30 mile range and it has a maximum speed of 20 miles per hour. Now, if you're wondering how hard it is to drive a scooter, well, let me show you. I let some of my immediate family give this a try. None of them had driven a scooter before, but check this out, they did quite well. All right, down here we have the scooter and over here we have the people that are gonna try it. So all of these people here are all all somehow related to me. So over here we have my son Scott and his wife Laura. She's an East Coaster, so everybody from the East Coast give a shout out. And over here we have my son Corey and his wife's from Brazil. So everybody who keeps saying hi to me from Brazil, here you go. Say hi to Anna. Oi. All right, here we go. There we go, so Scott, no problem. All right, who's up next? There you go. Let's see how that goes. So, what am I supposed to do? So, Sorry. when you move, you push this down. Okay. There you go. There you go. Oh, I can see you. Do it all in. Whoa. Do it all in. Doing well. How do we take it out of the Out of uh, what mode? Mode? Oh, it, uh, you want to go faster? Yeah. So that was nine miles an hour for Laura. She's gone the fastest so far. Okay, so Corey's tried on full speed. Here we go. It's not going. You gotta, you gotta move. You gotta move. But I... It's, uh, there you go. Yeah, don't push that red dial down all the way because <laughs> you'll go fast. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I'm just trying to figure which leg do I want up. All right, so old lady on skateboard. Here we go. <laughs> Shut up. There's a car right. coming, step in front That's of okay. Right. Okay, so I don't have to turn it on. I just have to push it down. Yeah, you have to move forward, take about three pushes, and then push the red thing down. There you go. Now push the red uh, switch down. There you go. Woo! Well, you got a break. Give it a shot. Don't go over the handlebars. So for someone uh, not... <laughs> over the age of 60, what do you think? <laughs> It was good. <laughs> Super easy to drive. Beginners can learn how to drive this in no time at all. 
you've got three brakes on it. So I've got a disc brake over here on this hand, which I can pull. I've also got a brake in the rear that I can step on. And I also have the electric brake up front, just releasing the throttle, the brake goes on. Now you're probably looking at me scrunched down here and going, how tall is this thing? It looks massive. And if you're wondering about how tall you have to be to ride this, well, the handlebars are non-adjustable. They stay as they are. The stem stays as it is. You can fold it up into a nice carry package. For height, you should be at least four feet tall so your arms hang properly or a maximum of six feet three inches according to the specifications and this deck it's like a skateboard deck it's 18 inches long and 5.7 inches across matter of fact if you drive this over bumps like speed bumps like in a city or potholes or anything like that it's got a 4.5 inch clearance now you can go over bumps like a speed bump up here it's got a ground clearance of 4.5 inches there we go you just want to see make sure it goes over it nice 10 inch wheels the tires, obviously pneumatic tires, but if you change the tire pressure to whatever you desire based on your weight, that turns into suspension because as you can see from here to up to the handlebars, there is no real suspension. Now the glaring difference on this scooter over many of the other scooters you might buy is a lot of scooters take this battery and they put it underneath and then they have no ground clearance and it also affects their ability to drive in wet weather or gravel or dirt because the battery's right there and you're messing things up so with the battery being up here this thing you can drive it in the rain you can drive it in snow mud water anything like that it's all rated to drive out in terrible weather and it works quite well in this video i've driven it on gravel roads dirt sand uh, over potholes everything else and it's awesome i do not find the ride to be like oh my god it's so bumpy or anything like that no i've got the tire pressure set for my weight and it works really well all right, let's try it on this gravel path. No problem. I'm not encountering any difficulties driving on gravel here, that's for sure. I just put it in the sport mode. I'm just gonna try it. It's a little dangerous, but I'm not gonna go full blast, obviously. You can control your speed in sport mode. So, not too bad. <gasps> I wouldn't drive this on snow or ice. I would, I'd tell you that much. Here we go. I'm giving it. We're moving. So you can see how you'd have a blast with this thing. It's pretty decent on gravel, I will say. Oh, I better stop. I see people up front. All right, so the question is, gravel's good. How about grass? Let's see. I'm going to go down an incline here. Gonna go? Yes! Still going. I'm on heavy, wet grass. And look at this. It's still going. Oh, that's incredible. I didn't think it would go on grass, but it does. <laughs> I'm super impressed now. This is like all terrain. All right. Let's see if it can go up this incline. Going up the incline, can you do it? Yes, on heavy, wet grass. Whoa! One thing to show you when you come up the curves, going down them or up them, since all the weight's in the front, your nose is always going to be heavier than the rear end. All right, so let me tell you about a few physical features before we get a little bit more deep into this video. Up here, you screw on the handlebars when it comes in the box. They're off and you just screw them into place. Mine have never become unscrewed. They remain super tight. It's awesome. You don't have to connect very much. Just screw in the handlebars. You're all good. So up top, you have your bell. So you can hear it there. It, it actually works when you're on a bike path or anything like that. You do have a disc brake in the back. If I pull this, I get a disc brake. Plus I get a brake light in the rear, which is pretty cool. In the forward section, you do have an LED light for driving at night and it is quite bright. And then over to the right, you have your throttle control, your function menu, and your on and off button. There is a display up top and it does show the remaining battery as well as how fast you're going in miles per hour or kilometers per hour, your choice. Now, as I've mentioned, it does go 20 miles per hour. However, that's a progressive speed. So you can go from zero to one mile an hour to two, all the way up to 20. And it does have three speed modes. Here, let me show you them. So the first speed we're gonna do is eco mode. Eco mode is the default speed and it has a maximum of six miles per hour. That's just a little faster than walking speed. So not very fast. Perfect for beginners, your first time trying it out. Uh, you set it with this little function button up top. So 
If you don't know how to drive a scooter, you just take one foot, put it on, and you push, just like when you were a kid like this. And as soon as you're going, you know, a decent speed, you put your other foot on, and you can lay it over top of this rear brake if you want and push it down the stop, but I don't because you're gonna wear out the brake. So uh, here, let me just show you. We're gonna go in eco mode. It's not very fast, watch this. So a little few pushes and get my foot on. I'm on full speed, this is eco mode. So if I was walking, uh, I would be going faster than walking speed, but it's not much faster. So this is what you drive when you're a beginner and just go along. And right now I'm in like cruise mode, eco mode, cruise mode, it goes by itself. And I just come along for the ride. All right, so let me spin it around and we'll do the next speed. So the next speed is called comfort mode and I believe it goes up to nine miles per hour which is pretty good for a city if you're going around people because you don't want to run them over. So I just hit the function button and I put it in comfort mode and uh, we're about to go. I should also mention that your speed is shown on a speedometer on the dash here. So a few pushes and we'll be in off and running. Here we go. All right, so here's full speed comfort mode. Much better. This is what you would drive around the city in. This is what I like to drive around when there's people in front of me or around me. All right, so let me turn around and I'll show you the last one, which is sport mode. So sport mode goes up to 20 miles per hour. Now, if I haven't already mentioned it, eco mode, comfy mode, and sport mode, I call it comfy mode, it's comfort mode. All of them go from zero to the top speed. So you can pick any speed in between zero to six miles an hour, zero to nine miles per hour for comfort mode, and all the way up to zero to 20 miles per hour for sport mode. All right, I'm gonna move this drone over to the left by moving forward, and we're gonna be in sport mode. So here we go, a few pushes, and here we off. All right, so you'll see it's much quicker. And if I look at my little speedometer, I'm up to like 15 miles per hour and I'm getting up to 20. Here we go. There we go. So you can see you wouldn't drive through a city with this with people in front of you. <laughs> Spin around and see if I can go fast again. This will give me a good chance to show you the brakes. So this brakes in the back plus my left, my foot here, my uh, left foot has a brake behind it and I could do that. And when I let go of the throttle, that's a brake as well. So here we go. I'm going to count down three, two, one, brakes. There we go. A little bit of skidding and sliding, but you can stop this thing from 20 miles per hour right down to zero in no time at all. This is the battery here. You can charge this up with the battery intact or you can remove the battery. So it's designed that the battery is changeable. Say you want to drive, I don't know, 60 miles. So you bring this battery, you go so far, you have a secondary battery in your backpack and you switch it. The battery just comes off by put, pushing the switch and then I push up from down here. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's hard to do when you're on the bottom. It's easier when you're on the top. So that's your battery. This here gives quite a bit of range and it goes for a very long time. I've only had to recharge this maybe once over the last week and a half. That's it. It goes and goes and goes. Here, let me show you my range test. Check this out. Now, before you take your first ride on your Turbo Ant, this is my Turbo Ant X7 Pro, it says in the little tag that was hanging off of this thing, it says, please ensure your tire pressure is at 34.8 PSI. So I'm gonna do that right now. You can see my tire pressure here. It says it's at 18.9 ship to me so we want to definitely add some air there we are we're at uh, 33.2 here we go green light so this unit over here is fully charged let's put it on the scooter so the battery fits in this slot here on the bottom of the battery you'll see two holes those two holes have to fit into two pegs at the bottom as soon as they're in those pegs you can just slam it in so lift it up to the top like this down into the two pegs. There we go, it's locked in. Let's power this on, see what the voltage is at. Currently it should show 100%. All my bars down here are showing full. All right, so the plan is to take the scooter out for a cruise. I'm gonna do about 10 kilometers, which is about six miles on a fully charged battery, because that's pretty much the commute most of you will make if you have a scooter like this during the day. So let's try it out and see how much battery power is at the start. And then at the end, we'll see what it is. Here we go.
Okay, so we're halfway and I'm gonna check what the battery is. Well, I'm looking right here and I still see one, two, three, four, five bars and a little bar. So uh, that's pretty good. There is a cruise control on here and I had it on cruise control. So uh, let's do the other half and we'll be up to over six miles. It'll be 10 kilometers, here we go. So as I round this corner, we're going to be at 10 kilometers, just over six miles. And if I look at the power remaining, uh, we've gone down one bar. So that's pretty darn good. Now weight limit on here is 275 pounds. So someone like me who only weighs about like 150 pounds, <laughs> I'm barely uh, doing any weight on this thing. So I'll get a super long range. If you weigh quite a bit, you know, it's going to reduce your range. And one thing I love about the scooter is the little kickstand. Just put it down and you're all done. There you go. There we go. After six miles, 10 kilometers, that's the remaining power. So I had one, two, three, four, five bars, and now I'm down to four bars. So that's pretty darn good. Now the electric motor is obviously down here in the front wheel. Uh, so that adds a bit of weight plus this. So you will find this is very front heavy. So if you're trying to move this over curves or anything, it's easy to lift up the front, put it on the curve and keep on going. But just be careful because there's very little weight in the back and this thing can come around and whack you in the ankles. At least it's happened to me a few times because all the weights at the front. Now I don't know if I mentioned it but the hub motor up front is 350 watts and this lithium-ion battery right here puts out about 36 volts. I'm looking at the battery now just to see if there's something like milliwatt hours or anything like that or watt hours. All I see is it says it's 10 amp hours at 360 watt hours. To charge the battery, the location is down here and a charger is included. Now, before I show you what comes to the box, let me just tell you, looking on the website, it says it has a 12 month warranty for if anything should go wrong. And it also has a 30 day return policy. So that's probably why this is extremely popular on the internet. They sell a ton of these. So uh, I guess the next thing to show you is when I received this, it came in a box and let me show you unboxing it. Here we go. This is the box your scooter comes in. Everything is well packaged inside. Emptying out the contents, you can see there's really not that much to put together. Besides the scooter, accessories include the battery charger, a spare inner tire tube in case you get a flat, an Allen key, and the manual. Assembling the scooter requires that you tighten the front brake and screw on the handlebars. After five minutes of assembly, you're ready for your first ride. So I've had this for a week and a half now. I've driven it around my area. I've driven it to places of work and I'm really enjoying it. I never thought I would be an electric scooter guy, but driving an electric scooter is so simple because it doesn't require any balance. It just, you know, it just goes. You can have one foot on, two feet on, put your feet wherever you wish. It's not an issue whatsoever. My favorite part of this here scooter is the cruise control. If I didn't already show you in the video of the cruise control, you just drive at any speed. As soon as it beeps at you, let go of the throttle, whatever speed you're at, and it keeps going at that speed. It actually has cruise control, so watch this. If I release the throttle, uh, I will just keep going at the same speed, no problem. It's really good for that. And finally, after driving this for a week and a half over my bumpy roads and folding it up and throwing it in my Jeep and out of my Jeep. I can say I've got next to no scratches on it and nothing is loose because there really is nothing to come loose on it. Everything still works as per the day I got it. So it's a really good product and it gets a thumbs up for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put links to this product below. Go check it out. See if it's something you want to get somebody else for Christmas or yourself. It is the perfect item for commuting. Certainly you could get yourself an electric bike, but try to fold that up and stick it in your car. That would be hard. You could get a skateboard like I do, but skateboards require balance and skill because uh, those things are a little scary if you don't know how to ride a skateboard, but it takes zero skill to drive this. So this is pretty cool. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up if you have questions on this product. Well, I've been driving it now, like I said, for a week and a half, so I should be able to answer almost anything. Just post your questions below and I will get back to you. So thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video. Bye.